Right, another one of these fake audio shows. What do you mean? Oh, the mic's on. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome again to the Battlefield Awards. Today we cover the worst things in Battlefield 4, and this award is also known as... Oh, for fuck's sake. Before we get started with the top five, let's have a look at a couple of dishonourable mentions. The first one is the Spawn Beacon. The reason the Spawn Beacon gets an honourable mention is because it's only partly broken. Now, doing this, which is seen on screen now, which is spawning on your beacon and appearing next to your beacon, I don't have a problem with. What I do have a problem with is parachute drops and using them to get to places you're not supposed to get to. Especially when you use this technique, which is placing a beacon and then simply redeploying killing yourself and spawning on your beacon again. Now of course you can do this without the redeploy, but a lot of snipers use the redeploy method to get to their sniper perches. You simply parachute in onto one of these ledges or onto the top of a building and then you simply drop another spawn beacon. Now doing this way you can actually climb with spawn beacons, you can go further and further up objects and buildings to get to the top. And it's just broken. I think DICE should simply remove the parachute option from the spawn beacon. They've done it on some maps so why not just do it completely, stop people parachuting in onto spawn beacons. Just have them appearing next to it, like it does inside a building. Makes no sense that in the open they work differently to inside buildings. So for the number of people abusing spawn beacons they make it onto my dishonourable list. The, the next dishonourable item, item is, is those bloody, bloody server admin, admin messages. messages. I don't know what DICE were thinking the day they decided that server admin messages need to appear across the middle of the screen in big orangey yellow letters. And I don't know what most server admins are thinking when they put up spamming messages every two or three minutes. This particular server advertises its server website twice every two minutes. It also advertises the rules about every three minutes. It puts up every single knife kill. There are so many messages that they actually interrupt each other. So server admins, stop it with the messages. I don't need to know that Billy Bob just stabbed Tweedledee across the other side of the map. I don't need to know your website. I don't need to know what your name is. I don't need to know what my ranking is on your server. Please just stop it. It gets even worse when you're trying to fly because they're right in the middle of the flying hood. It's just annoying. There's no option to turn them off. There's no option to move them. You could move them right to the top of the screen, in the middle, there's nothing there. But no, they have to appear across virtually the middle of the screen. So because of DICE's positioning of the messages, and the fact you can't turn them off, and the fact that server admins just spam them at you, server admin messages get a dishonourable mention on this list. So let's, let's get, get started, started on the list proper. And at number 5 we have the M142 missile truck. The M142. Well, what can you say about the M142? Is there anything good to say about it? No. It's a vehicle that you can hide at the back of the map, out of sight, and just launch missiles across the map. Now, this is a really good spot to put it. Stick the M142 next to the AA tank and then just launch missiles. AA tank will protect you from helicopters and jets and you get to fire missiles halfway across the map, killing infantry who never see it coming. From where those infantry are, they have no response against the M142. There's nothing they can do about it apart from run and hide. And it's going to be one of the themes of this list of worst things in Battlefield 4. Dumb shit you can do nothing about. What can you do as infantry on the other side of the map about the M142 just raining rockets down on you? Nothing. You can be simply playing your game, running and gunning, and then 
a rocket will land on you and you die. It doesn't help that the maps they've chosen to put the M142 on are the maps that have lots of open spaces. So you've got nowhere to hide in any case. It's an area of effect weapon. It layers a carpet of missiles in an area and you can't avoid it if you're out in the open. And in this clip you're going to see a perfect example of why the M142 is so badly thought out. So I'm moving it towards the back of the map. As I come around this corner there's an enemy LAV here. So I just drive straight past it and I head into our spawn. And I literally park this in our spawn. It's out of bounds. He can't get in here. So I can be perfectly safe sat in our own spawn. How can this logically be a good weapon? I park it up around this corner and he can't shoot me anymore. DICE must have seen this eventuality coming, but they still gave the M142 enough range that from my own spawn I can still launch missiles at two capture points. In fact I can almost reach C. The M142 can sit here quite happily. The only threats it's ever going to face are maybe jets or helicopters if they're really brave. But back here I can rain down death on these poor people who can't see it coming. They're on foot, they're in a firefight, capturing points and I'm playing some kind of weird little computer game and killing them from miles away. Fortunately it's not on that many maps and that's why it only comes in on my list at number 5. So the M142 is the fifth worst thing in Battlefield 4. Coming, Coming in at, at number, number 4 we have the XM25 Airburst. The XM25. This is one of those weapons that must have sounded great when DICE were coming up with it. Hey guys, you know what we should put in the game? That intelligent grenade launcher, the XM25. Alright, oh, so replace the grenade launcher with the new intelligent version. No, 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 we're not going to give it to assaults, we're going to give it to support. We're going to give support a grenade launcher. Yes. Right. Are you sure that's a good idea? Yeah, yeah, it'll be fine. So we give support a slow firing, hard to use grenade launcher. No, no, it fires really quick and it's easy to use. It either explodes on contact or you can set it up so it'll explode at a certain range. And if you use it really close in, you can just use it like an explosive round shotgun. Are you really sure this is a good idea? Yep, it'll be fine. What could possibly go wrong? What went wrong is that DICE ended up giving support yet another spam weapon. But unfortunately it's a spam weapon that has multiple uses. It has almost no projectile drop. Therefore you can snipe with it at long ranges. At close ranges it works really well as an explosive round shotgun. Essentially they took explosive round shotguns out of the game but gave support one. You don't even have to aim. Because it's explosives you just put the crosshairs on them and pull the trigger. And then they gave it the ability to reload. So the support players can just drop an ammo bag and reload their XM25. Sure it takes a while but while they're doing that it's not like they haven't got an LMG to spam with as well. Or grenades that are reloading too. The XM25 would have been a good weapon if it had been given to the assault class instead of the standard grenade launcher. So the XM25 makes it to number 4 on the list. At number 3 we have a joint entry for the M224 Mortar and the UCAV. One of the reasons this is a joint entry is that DICE decided in their wisdom that you could have both on the same loadout. But the reason I've really put them together at number 3 is that these are typical things in Battlefield 4 that make you say, oh for fuck's sake you get a bunch of supports spamming a map with mortars and UCAVs. The UCAV at least takes some skill. The mortar is again playing a little computer game within the game, dropping death on people from above. There's no skill to it and there's no way to avoid it. They can simply sit somewhere perfectly safe, put down a mortar and launch death halfway across the map. For the people on the receiving end it's no fun and for the people doing it 
it's just spam. They're not even playing the game mostly. They're just sitting at the back with an ammo box trying to get kills with the mortar because it makes their stats look good. When you first get the UCAV, it does take a bit of skill to hit your target. But as soon as you've got the airburst warhead, you just have to get somewhere close. You press the left mouse button, you detonate it, and what's underneath dies. With the mortar, any trace of skill is removed. You just put the crosshairs over the little triangle, and if you've judged where they're moving right, they're dead. So the UCAV isn't quite as bad as the mortar. It does have its uses. It's pretty good at taking out snipers on top of perches. And it's only a single shot. Except, of course, that they've let you reload the UCAV as well. Why they keep doing this, I don't know. Stop giving gadgets reloads. The situation's even worse if there's a supply crate around, because you simply run up to it, do a quick class switch, and then, oh look, when I come back to support, I've got another UCAV again. Infantry troops should not have weapons that let them sit in the back, not playing the objectives, and just launching things across the maps to get kills. The UCAV, I believe, is fixable. Remove the air burst from it and make it so it can't be reloaded from ammo bags. Then you get one shot, you can get your kill, fair enough. But the mortar is irredeemable. It's always been horrible and it shouldn't be in the game anymore. So, for those reasons, the mortar and the UCAV share the third position on my list. At number two, we have, we have the vehicle, vehicle with, with no redeeming, redeeming features. features. It's, it's the, the jets. jets. No one really knows why, but DICE love jets. They've been a pain in the arse since they were put in the games originally, and they're still a pain in the arse. DICE have never been able to balance jets properly in the game. If you balance the stingers to work against jets, then they're overpowered against helicopters. So at the moment, almost all the AA in the game is underpowered against jets. Jets can be effective without ever getting into the range of an AA missile. The Stinger and the Igla just aren't good enough to cope with jets. And DICE then nerfed the AA tank into the ground, so while it's a fair fight between an AA tank and a helicopter, it's not a fair fight between an AA tank and a jet. A jet doesn't have to stay around long enough for the AA tank to be able to kill it. Unless a pilot is being really stupid in a jet, he should never be taken out by a stinger or an igler. Coming up, you're going to see a jet doing a run straight at me, and I manage to get off a shot as it comes in, and I get a shot off as it leaves. But the only reason I managed to get two hits is because he messed up his flares. But even then, he's still flying. I don't manage to kill him. He loiters around in the background and then comes back. A good jet pilot that uses his countermeasures efficiently or uses the terrain cannot be shot down. The only thing they're really vulnerable to is other jets. People on the ground and even the AA tank on the ground just can't deal with jets anymore. My solution for this problem is a simple one. Remove jets from battlefield. Without jets you wouldn't need the AA tank and helicopters would be better as well. So for that reason, jets make it to number two on my list. And, and now we, we come, come to, to number, number one. one. The, the worst, worst thing, thing in Battlefield, Battlefield 4. Commander, Commander Mode. So when I first heard about Commander Mode was coming back to Battlefield 4, I was quite excited. It is an interesting mode to play. But only if you're the commander. If you're anybody else in the game, it's a nightmare mode. DICE have got commander mode wrong from start to finish. There is nothing in commander mode that I think is a good idea. But the single biggest problem with commander mode is that you can have a game where only one side has a commander. And yet he still has full access to all the commander abilities. Who at DICE thought that was a good idea? Alright, so he can spot everything and there's no other commander to block the spots. Oh, he can launch cruise missiles and there's no commander to counter them. And he can still scan the entire map for infantry and vehicles. Do we think we should turn some of those off if there's no commander on the other side? No? Oh, okay then. 
Now there are some things about Commander Mode I like. Being able to reward squads that are working towards objectives, being able to drop supplies, although I think the supplies should work as a glorified ammo bag rather than letting you switch class, that's a bit overpowered, and the little buggy drop is pointless. But my major problem with Commander is they're too active in the actual game. What I would like to see is Commander mode taken a step back. So rather than putting up a UAV and picking out everybody in that area, it would be better if they could say draw a box on the screen or a circle on the screen and say there are enemies here. Maybe pointing out tanks so that they can put a marker down and saying there was just a tank here. You know, not exactly specifying where the tank is because it might move away. But every 30 seconds let them spot a tank. Every 30 seconds let them draw out an area where there's a heavy concentration of enemy infantry. That kind of thing I can see the point of. Exactly pinpointing every enemy in an area I think is a step too far. We can't talk about the commander without talking about their direct involvement in the game. And the gunship. The gunship is an overpowered beast. Another commander can ECM it and knock down some of its health. It can be attacked by jets. That's about it. It can no longer be effectively attacked from the ground. So it just flies around lobbing shells down on the infantry and vehicles below. Who have got no effective way of fighting back at it. It's one of those really annoying, unavoidable deaths. There's nothing you can do about it. Somebody who's not even really playing the game is killing you by calling in a gunship. True, it has players in it, but without the commander, there wouldn't be a gunship. One thing I will never understand is putting the most powerful weapon in the game in the hands of somebody who can be playing on a tablet on the train. The cruise missile. It can just devastate an entire area, kill everything and every vehicle in it, and it's by somebody who's not even playing the game. Now it's obvious Commander Mode was just brought back so that DICE could say, hey look, we're all modern, we've got an app to go with our game. That's fine, but what they produced was something that is just too involved in the game, and can swing the game completely. One side having a Commander and the other side not, is just overpowered. If they want to keep commander mode they should simplify it and make it more justifiable and more in-game. So if you want to spot some enemies say oh look there's a load of enemies there around the railway station well what I'll do is I'll select that area and a parachute flare or some smoke will drop into the game and signal to the players there's a bunch of enemies there. Oh look there's a tank on that hill, I'll drop some smoke on that. Different colour to show there's a vehicle in that area. Or maybe it's just a flare that slowly parachutes down, showing you somewhere under this flare there is a tank. Now in both of those circumstances, the tank could see the flare and just move out of the way. The infantry could see that there's smoke coming down and move out of the way. But at the moment they have no option of dealing with a commander. The commander just sits there and isn't really involved in the game, but massively affects the way the game plays out. I think if they simplify commander mode, make it more general and make it so that the effects are shown in game, so with the flares or the smoke or some kind of idea like that, then they can save commander mode. But as it is at the moment, I just think they should delete it and remove it from the game. It shouldn't be in Battlefield, and it shouldn't be in the next versions of Battlefield. So for that reason, my number one, the worst thing in Battlefield 4, the oh for fuck's sake moment, is Commander Mode. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The top five worst things in Battlefield 4, or the oh for fuck's sake award. And with that, we draw to a close the Battlefield 4 Awards. We do hope you found them interesting, and not too much like desperate filler over Christmas and New Year. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next year for the Battlefield 2015 Awards. Right, let's get out of here before the pubs close.